And welcome back to Flexible Games, where we are playing Fortress Craft Evolved. Alright, time to do a little bit of work now and uh, kind of save ourselves from having to do it later. Uh, we are going to build another one of these forced uh, or these induction pads. Right here. And on this, we are going to put, uh, let's see, we are going to have three ore smelters Cracking. with three of these arc smelter upgrades. Because I've already got the forced induction, so now I need, what, six of the Mark V uh, power boosters. And I have the inventory space. I've been cleaning up my inventory a little bit. So I should have enough for six. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Hop back down here. And then one, two, three, bingo. Okay, so let's place these down. I'm gonna put them right smack in the middle. And then we are going to put the arc smelters on top. It's like so. And these things uh, will dramatically increase the power they're going to be using, but we don't mind that too much. Uh, what we, we are going to focus on is the system for moving the ore, because we want to move ore fast. So one, two, three. Add add and add uh, and now we're going to take it out here and we're going to add some 2000 slot hoppers at least one at least one here uh, and I don't know if we I don't think we need tubes these aren't the fastest things in the world what they are is very very power hungry so I put this smack in the middle of this battery and this turbine and I built that turbine and that battery a while ago knowing that this is kind of what I was going to use it for a little bit of work in advance here so in here we're going to have a couple of these 2000 slot hoppers And this one's going to go in like that. This one will have three going out like that. So this this is able to hold uh, 4,600 ore, which is perfect. Because we get about 2,000 ore out of every uh, cycle of the hard rock grinder. Uh, now the last part of this, we're going to want a few lasers beaming power into this. Uh, I'm going to go for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I want 5 of these uh, laser lenses here. Cracking. So let's uh, build some lasers. I'm going to put three of them on here. Uh, and you are right in the way, Mr. Slime. So here, here, and here. So there's plenty of power. You know, two of these is enough to, to power it. But I'm going to do three just because I love the way that looks. Just massive amounts of power beaming in there. Uh, and now it's a matter of just hooking up this turbine into the system so right in here turbine starts up good to go and it should immediately start powering these lasers and the lights uh, and we should start seeing some power dribbling into these things now we don't really have any ore to speak of yet we do have a little bit of ore I'll go grab the ore here so the chromium and molybdenum and this is i'm going to have a molybdenum left so i'm just going to leave one behind because we don't need we don't need that uh 
So if we go over here, I can put the chromium like here, the molybdenum here, and these will smelt slowly, but they'll smelt the bars. And of course they're going to come out and they won't have anywhere to go. So I need molybdenum chromium in here. So I'm going to set that to chromium for now. And where did the molybdenum go? There's still molybdenum ore in there. Oh, it looks like it needs four, not two. Okay, that is good to know. That is very good to know. Okay, so I'm going to take that out. Or did it take six? I put ten in there, and I've got two left. And only one bar. Unless it's still smelting. Nope. What did that, that take eight ore? Yeah, eight ore. Ooh, wow. That's, uh... That's pretty hefty. It's a hefty amount of ore. Uh, okay, so we're going to put that back and put these back. So we got one chromium out of it. I thought it was going to stick with the two that these used, but uh, apparently not. So there is our frozen factory initial smelting setup. Uh, and we will work on, you know, getting that going right now. This kind of is the... The beginnings, the beginnings of the frozen factory here, because we've already charged the OET twice. I could easily charge it a couple more times, but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave those going for a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna head down to the cold caves. I'm gonna show you some of the massive amount of work that I've done prepping the cold caves. I want to clear the cryo as fast as possible. We've got a little work left to do, but it's we're almost ready. Um, so here is the area that the the ores will come up so here's where chromium will come up and here's where molybdenum will come up so i'll have a you know cargo lifts on each one each pad and then the blast furnaces around and those will all go into a continuing casting basin that will be right here uh, now, where is the C5 going to go? Well, I have that marked right over here. This pad right here I have as where the C5 is going to go. I kind of wanted to put it in an area sort of out of the way. And since I marked where the C5 is going to go, I now know where the cryo spawners are going to show up. And that is very, very important because before, in all, in both previous series that I've covered this, uh, I have not done any prep work in the cold caves to prepare for the the cryo spawners. But in this one, I wanted to go as fast as possible. So here we are. I will show you all of the work that I've done. Okay, so the spoiler is, uh, if you don't want to know how the, the frozen factory works, you know, then uh, push mute now. But uh, otherwise, uh, the C5, wherever you build the C5, the second you build it, the game then spawns in eight cryo spawners. And those eight cryo spawners appear from every cardinal direction, so northeast, southwest, and every corner direction. So there's eight around, and so they are 320 blocks, 320 blocks away from the center of the C5. So all you need to do, once you know where the C5 is gonna go, the C5 being the Cold Cavern Climate Control Center, once you know where that's gonna be, you can then map out where exactly the cryos are gonna be. You just take whatever coordinate this is, which is 91 minus two, and then you take 320 and you add, and, add or subtract it, depending on which direction you're going, and then you take the corners of those values and you go around. So once I knew that, I started the big process of digging and creating my cryo fighting system 
ahead of time and getting this all ready for cryo. And the thing that I have left, because right now, the way that I have this cold cavern set up is you take, you take the very center of this, the cryo spawner will spawn, let me, uh, let me illustrate this, on that block, okay, that height, but way down the line. So it'll spawn at that height, ex that exact location, way, way down there. So if you fly down here, and I'll just buzz down here really quick, 320 blocks down here is the roughly the location where the cryo spawner will spawn. So if we get down to the end here, you can see it just sort of ends. And the reason it ends is you don't want to build too much around because the first thing that happens when the cryo spawners spawn in, before they do, there's a little explosion over here. And that is the game. The developer made a little explosion to clear out any any rock or miscellaneous stuff around where the cryo spawner is going to be um, and to clear it out and get it ready for the cryo spawner. So I built this up to a certain point and then the cryo spawner will appear, you know, roughly, you know, maybe maybe like right in here. Okay, so the, the final work needs to be done, you know, once once I'm reached once I've reached that point. And there is a there is an emerald over here. And I have to I have to get it. You know, you just have to get it. There it is. That green glow. So once once those cryo spawners come in, they will immediately want to grow towards your C5. And if you leave a area that is completely devoid of any obstacles, it will actually reach there very, very quickly. Um, but if you put obstacles in the way, like I've done with these walls, uh, it will slow it down. So the thing that I have left is for these areas, I need to block off. I'm leaving that one open. And then the next one, I'm going to block off the other side. Because think of the C, think of the cryo spawner as sort of a snake, the head of the snake. So the head of the snake will, you know, try to find its way, and it'll, it'll hit this wall right here first. And there is a barrier in here of a couple blocks. And it'll hit that and go, okay, I want to go to one of these sides. If it goes to this side, it'll grow, 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 grow out and hit this wall. And then it'll start trying to find its way through. And it'll have to go over this hump and then grow this way. And it'll be like, oh, I've got a clear path. So let's grow, grow, grow all the way up to here. And it'll hit this barrier again. So it'll have to do the same thing. It'll have to hop over. Um, and I'm hoping it slows it down enough to you know make a big difference in how fast the cryo this is really experimental this is the first time that i'm doing something like this so you know this is very very experimental i'm not sure how much this is going to work but uh so yeah this is the final step in this process and i'm going to be very prepared for the cryo hopefully before it enters here because uh this last one last barrier I'm actually going to close both sides off because so I wanted to I really want it to fill this cavern inside of there I want it to fill that whole void in there so there's a lot of cryo to fight because I really want to really want to beat up that cryo uh, so yeah I've got one of these on every uh, every cardinal point the only ones I don't have are the diagonals and those are relatively easy once these are dug out because you just shoot to the side on on one of these and you can then clear it out that way so that is roughly how the cryo is going to work on this level and we need now to start digging the shafts for the cargo lifts 
because we need to, these cargo lifts are going to go down quite a ways. They're going to go down several hundred, several hundred blocks from here all the way down to like, I don't know, 700 something down. So like 500 blocks. Okay, so the last step is this. And bring these down. And then this one. All the construction paste that dropped, pick up that. Lots of organic rock. Massive amount of organic rock down here. Glad I, I'm glad I built this lower one because, wow. this It adds up fast. You can see, and we just picked up a bunch more. And trigger that guy. Lots of lasers to take him out. Oh, another one. Sometimes I come down here. If I spend it, if I spend any time down here, I'll come down here and there'll be you know 50 organic rock and then 20 and then 30 and then five. Just crazy how fast it builds up. So yeah, there's a ton of organic rock down here. None in there. None in there. Ten. There's ten in there. None there. Should have some over here somewhere. Oh yeah, 43. And some spoiled organics. Spoiled organics are from slimes that happen to fall all the way down from the surface. Okay, so now I need... I need a way to protect this line. So, if I go down like this... This is going to be a laser, so I'm going to want to protect it like that. Because if Cryo gets down here, I don't want it to fall down the hole. I want it to stay put. Oops. I need to get in here and dig out the... Because this, this area was... filled in by me. There's a there's quite a lot of blocks in here to fill in. Uh, might as well fill that in. And then on this side I'm going to put glass because there's a laser right there. Not that it really needs it, but The excavator will take care of everything else. Okay. This one. All right. Uh, yeah, you are going to have to die. There you go. Okay, and this one I think is a kind of out of the way, so I don't really need to worry too much. And then over here. And then this one. And this will tell me where where the uh, where the box is, where I need to dig out. So there's a couple blocks in here that I need to get out. Let's make sure those are clear. Okay. And if I did my math right, this should this should work out. Okay. So those are protected now. Oh, another camel bot. That's amazing. These things are crazy how fast they spawn and they give a lot of organic there's another one over there that just spawned give me look at that 13 organic rock in that short amount of time 
So yeah, they this little kill floor down here, very, very organic rock lucrative. Okay, so those are the areas in here where we need to excavate. Now we need to head down uh, to, the ba to the base and excavate down there. Uh, so it's just a matter of going all the way down to where the ore is and then excavating the holes. I, and I can do that, no problem, uh, between episodes. It's really not, not too difficult. I've got plenty of space in my inventory for any miscellaneous stuff that I have to get through. I've also got a couple hundred uh, nano disintegrators if I need them. And I've also put a lot of work into a platform in here in the toxic caves uh, for eventual chlorine, you know, to grab chlorine out of there. And I won't be hitting, I won't be hitting the creation, uh, what am I thinking, words. I won't be hitting the mine shafts because those are over here somewhere. Those are kind of in, in that area somewhere over there. So I know I won't be hitting those. So it's just a matter of, just a matter of, you know, getting all the particle filters and everything going, getting everything ready to go and uh, getting more power. I'm gonna need a lot more power down in the cold caves. And I want to really get a jump start on my nuclear reactor mod. Uh, I would love to get that going as soon as possible. So here is, here are the pads for the molybdenum, and here are the areas for the uh, chromium. And these are going to be up a ways because the trenches are actually going to be pointing straight down into the vein. So these are going to be pointing down, so I'm going to need to raise these up a little bit for the cargo lifts, which is fine. But yeah, that'll do it for this episode. And I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.